Hello there, I'm Aldra Hill and do I have something special for you. During my last Vicky 3 Napoleon video, I told you that if it hit a thousand likes, I would let you in on a massive secret. And you did it. So, here it is. The ultimate truth. Napoleon Bonaparte, the first emperor of France, is alive and well. Well, not now, obviously, but in Vicky 3, 1836. That's right. He didn't perish on St. Helena. That was a British lie to hide you from the truth. Wake up, sheeple. Napoleon I is here in the great nation of Mexico, and he's back to take control and seek revenge on the traitorous French and British people. And we're going to give him that justice. For more hidden secrets of Vicky 3 and a lot more videos like this, you should subscribe to move from this group to this one. Also, like the video for way more Napoleon goodness and other videos as well. Get this video to 1500 likes and I'll make a very different Napoleon show up somewhere completely different. I, I promise I'll stop with this Napoleon thing after a while. Right, so here we are in Mexico. And while I do the regular opening steps of preparing my industry and fighting Texas, I should say that obviously this is a mod I've made after several painstaking hours. Modding Victoria 3 is really hard, okay? And if you want a chance to play it yourself, or to see a secret Patreon-only video explaining how I made it, you can check out my Patreon, which is linked below or in the top right-hand corner right now. Also, credit where credit's due, the base idea for this modern video came from Lady Saffron, a great channel you should check out that I've linked down below as well. Look at that, while we've been talking, a new chap has emerged. What's this? We're a monarchy? How's this happened? Uh, uh, okay, th this isn't a perfect event, I'm, I'm not the best modder ever. Th there's supposed to be an image of Napoleon there, but it's it's not worked. It it's fine, H here we go, here we go. Ah, much better. So here it is, Napoleon. He has arrived in Mexico. He knew that he would never have a chance in Europe, so his supporters have helped him flee to the new world to set up again and bring vengeance. Now a changed man and a follower of Hutzepetopetekelek, the Aztec God of War, and now King of Mexico, Napoleon Bonaparte, will take back his homelands. And more. And yes, this event did take me absolutely ages to make. Ah, uh, mm, okay. <laughs> Napoleon isn't supposed to look like this. I spent literally hours perfectly designing Napoleon in the character creator. He's supposed to be bald. He, he's not supposed to have a mustache. He's he's not supposed to be Mexican or tanned. <laughs> Why does this happen? I swear, if you de-age him 20 years, take off a lot of hair and make him Corsican in appearance, he looks just like Napoleon Bonaparte. Let me know in the comments if you know where I went wrong. He is also a follower of a unique ideology, the Sunset Invasion. Look at all the wonderful things he supports. And look at his traits. Come on, I think this is probably the trait list that Napoleon would have. God, look at his popularity. Everyone loves him. Goals for the game? Play a really strong Mexico. Take back France. We do need to be a great power first, otherwise we don't have enough maneuvers to actually claim Paris or anything else. So first, we must win the kerfuffle against Texas. Also, the political situation is not good. The landowners and the intelligentsia and a lot of people in the country are quite upset at being suddenly given a new monarch. <laughs> so we're going to have to be careful. If we go dedicated police force right away, this does make everyone a little bit happier. So hopefully they won't erupt in rebellion. But Napoleon isn't concerned with that. He needs to take command and fight the Texicans, but he can also seek a royal marriage? Remember, at this time, Napoleon is single and ready to mingle. Look at all these eligible princesses. This is like Victorian Tinder. <laughs> One of them is actually a French princess. Can you imagine being the daughter of the French king and be like, hey, go marry Napoleon in Mexico. It'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> let's just roleplay that he stole her or something. It, it's fine. While we wait, let's go beat up Sam Houston. Look at his smug face getting wrecked by old man Napoleon. Yeah. All right, we've dedicated police force past. We need to think about trying to improve our economy through laws. Interventionism, please, so we can actually start to improve. But wait, much more important news. We've already popped out an air. Where did he come from? And he is very malevolent looking. Oh God, he's an authoritarian member of the Catholic Church and his name is Francisco. <laughs> this is going to go terribly. In celebration of the new heir to Mexico, e even though there is a small rebellion forming, it's fine, we'll ignore it. Let's expand. Let's puppet Central America. Incredibly easy conflict, Napoleon wrecks all. And we can now just focus on our economy, building tool workshops and, and lumber yards, and even passing per capita taxation. 
I know, this game is just, it's riveting. I forget how bad Mexico is, like, economically at this time. Like, we don't know what iron mines are. We don't even really have trade laws. So I gotta get stock exchange to try and get trade laws. We have to try and import iron and then think about building them. Like, we're losing a lot of money just trying to get construction sectors. But I need them, man. We gotta start industrializing. And of course, the US embargoes us. That is, that is super rude, dude. Come on. But it's okay, we don't need gross American trade. Look, the capitalists are actually doing something. They're building iron mines. Yes, we can even start moving over to free trade now, but I'm so busy industrializing and focusing on trade, I didn't even notice that the Ute Native Americans have decided to rebel. <laughs> they took almost half of the like northern bit of my country. Let's just let's just send Napoleon to take care of them. I am getting concerned about America, though they look very angry. I think we should move up to line infantry and actually put cannons in our army now. Also, I'm massively stupid. Look what's happened. I bet you realized this when you saw me do it. Why did I puppet Central America? They break up by event. Uh, such a waste of time. We've kept El Salvador, but the rest has just popped out for free. Also, New Granada has been made a dominion of the UK. This is what happens when you put aggressive AI on. Let me know in the comments if you think it's a good idea. Oh god. Okay, see, mm, this is why I improved my army. Here they are. America is here, trying to demand their states. Napoleon will not stand for this. He himself will lead the charge against the American invaders. We don't actually have skirmish infantry yet, though we're working on it, but we should be able to do okay. And here's what we're going to take. We're going to try and take from America everything west of the Mississippi, alongside war reps. Let's go, a good old-fashioned American frontier war. All right, first battle, and Napoleon is winning, even on the defense. Mustaches clearly beat beards. Uh, however, unfortunately, there's just too many Americans and they have skirmish infantry. We're, we're winning a fair amount of battles, but we're also losing some. I'm really concerned about the drain in our economy. I think we just got a piece out. They will accept a piece if I give them a couple kind of crappy empty states, so I'm just going to do that and then we'll come back with a vengeance later. Don't worry. Despite that initial failure, we are still strong. Napoleon is strong, and we are now a major power. We're gonna expand south into Honduras, pass laissez-faire, and just sort of grow our economy and prepare for more fighting. And the thing we've all been waiting for, gold in California, let's go. Our economy is about to start flourishing. Unfortunately, America has other ideas and they've attacked us again, only this time they've brought France with them. So it looks like Napoleon gets to fight the French. Interestingly, Russia will actually help us. So this is a pretty even fight. We're going to try and go for pretty much the same goals and just expand west of the Mississippi. And this time, we've got better soldiers. We can also condemn their slavery, which is very cool. And once again, mustaches beat beards. Look at that thing. This conflict is really dragging on because it's just one wide front. Let's do a fun little trick. We're going to naval invade with two armies and two navies at the exact same time. This means that they should be able to land pretty much unopposed. There we go. That's got us Louisiana. And oh my god, look what's happened. Apparently, the Mexican condemnation of slavery had a bigger effect than I expected. The South has seceded. It's the American Civil War. Let's go. Let's see if we can drag this conflict out a little bit more. We're going to invade DC with the same trick, and we're going to see if we can make the CSA last as long as possible. Maybe they can even win. Oh, that'd be great. N not because I agree with their views, but because I want them to disrupt America, okay? Ah, uh, doesn't make a difference. They just get wrecked. They got instantly destroyed and annexed by the US. That is so lame. That's fine. We'll just peace out. We can take back everything we want and we've expanded massively. Weirdly, our authority just explodes and everything goes a bit weird. And then I realize why? Napoleon has gone. I didn't even see the alert. He's left this mortal plane. He never even got a chance to invade France. It's okay. His weird 20-year-old son of Francisco will take up the Napoleonic mantle and will seek vengeance for his father. And we do have to slap down a couple rebellions in Louisiana, but it's fine. After a small period of improving the economy, it's time for us to start the conflict on America. I think just one more little kerfuffle. And then we can think about invading Europe after we've expanded our strength a little bit by taking it from America. Should be quite easy. We're just gonna do that little trick of invading the capital again. And Austria is also helping us and they're actually like sending troops here. Thanks. There it is. Super easy conflict. That's very nice. 
There's some more small rebellions. Francisco is not as popular as his father, but hey, we get a really cool event with the petition march that allows us to like fast travel on trains straight to the capital. We get a bunch of popularity and loyalism across the country. We're gonna be great. We've been really developing our navy and our army, getting ready to invade France when look what's happened. It's the fall of France. They're in a revolution. This is a terrible idea, but this is the time. Let's go, let's invade while they're busy. We're going to take back France. N not all of it, because it's really expensive. We're going to take Normandy and Paris, because that's the goal. I wanted Paris. Austria and Spain and two Sicilies are going to help us for some reason. And we do still have to fight America again, but that's fine. We can just hold them at the border. Send our entire army all at once to invade Normandy like the D-Day landings in a century's time. And oh my god, it works. Right on the Cottonton Peninsula, we land. Just as he receives this great news, the glorious Francisco Bonaparte, who uh, unfortunately is an opium addict, but we'll just ignore that, he has a son, Ignacio. <laughs> Ignacio Bonaparte. He's a market liberal. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, some bad news. The invasions were going well. We were fighting on all sides. But of course, the civil war was going on. So we've been kicked out. What's happened is that the revolution won, took back all of France, and automatically sent all of my troops home. So we have to completely reinvade while France is fighting a three-front war against Spain, Italy, and Austria. A mega Austria, I should add. Luckily, since the armies are so busy, there's no one to defend Normandy. Everyone knows that if D-Day doesn't go right, just D-Day in the exact same spot again. Also, look how cowardly the US are. They just completely leave. We just get war reps from them for free, and now we can focus all of our attention on France. Okay, we are actually losing in Normandy. They are genuinely pushing us off from the beaches. But the thing is, this is giving the Austrians the chance they need. They're crushing through Alsace-Lorraine and rushing into Paris because the majority of the French forces are attacking us. We're approaching about a million casualties total, but it's getting close right now. We do pretty much take Paris, but for some reason they're not dipping below zero war support. Ah, it's because liberate Mecklenburg was what Austria demanded. And because Mecklenburg isn't in the war, the war support isn't ticking down because obviously we can't occupy them. I don't know what's going on. Neither do the French, it seems. They're trying for a white peace while I've occupied almost half their country. Get out of here. Oh, okay, it's changed. And now it started ticking down and we can peace out. Ah, oh, the French people are done with kerfuffles. Yes, come on. There it is. Francisco Bonaparte marches victoriously down the Champs-Elysees because he's done it. He has reclaimed the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and Paris. Now, you might think I was going to stop here, but no. There's still one more goal, one more objective for Francisco Bonaparte so that he can fully avenge his father's mistreatment. He must take London so that he may find Lord Wellington's grave and defile it. Only then can his father have peace. As if in recognition of the king's great achievements, the people of Texas erect a monument to their king. Just a few years of preparation, upgrading our naval tech, and begging the capitalists to please stop building arts academies, and we are ready to invade Britannia. Russia will join us in our fight against Britain. Surprise, surprise, the very first thing I do is send my entire army to invade Portsmouth as quickly as we can. We're basically just trying to get into the home countries and no joke, it works. I did not expect, I expected we were gonna just get yeeted into the sea, but it works. Our armies have been stopped by Nicholas Knightley, but we are occupying a bit of southern England. Uh, ooh, okay, well, unfortunately what's happened is that the British Navy is really, really strong and they're sinking all of my convoys and all my armies have been defeated, and the Russians have been defeated. Okay, we've been completely kicked out of England. We're, we're gonna have to do all of that again and reinvade again. Oh god, we are beginning to run out of money. This is a race against bankruptcy. But just as Russia pieces out of the war and abandons us, we do manage to reinvade England. This, this has just been awful, just an endless slog fighting in like Hampshire over and over again. But I think Britain's gotten tired, look. They'll accept the peace. We won't be able to take British Guatemala, which is another goal I had, but you know what? It doesn't matter. We can take war reps, which we desperately need to not go bankrupt, and the home countries. 
Ah, oh, that's it. Look at that delicious green border gore. We've done it. We've taken London and Paris. Francisco Bonaparte, aged 39, has avenged his father. True, he's an opium addict. And true, he doesn't look anything like his father. And true, his heir is named Ignacio and is a great balding market liberal at age 13, but it doesn't matter. We've done it. Napoleon Bonaparte has been avenged. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a fantastic experience. Like I said at the start, if you would like to try the mod out for yourself or just find out how I made it, there is a behind the scenes video and also the mod itself on my Patreon link below. Like the video to celebrate more Napoleonic greatness, get this video to 1500 likes and you will find a very different Napoleon video on this channel. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe for a new video every week, 5 p.m. Sunday British time. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Algerhill, where I'm probably streaming right now as this video finishes. And I do hope to see you in the very next video. Glory to Napoleon. Bye-bye.